Hey guys, so today's video is um, it's about the Zeo patch. Shoot, I forgot to grab the box. Okay, take two, let's try this again. <laughs> okay, so um, today I'm gonna talk about the Zeo patch. Um, it was a heart monitoring device that my um, cardiologist and her electrophysiologist colleague, who I have not seen, but she spoke with, decided that I needed to wear for two weeks. I'm actually one day over. Um, it shouldn't be monitoring anymore at this point. The monitoring should be over. But I left it on because I forgot to make this video during that two weeks. And I just wanted to show it to you in the video before I removed it. So I actually need to get it in the mail and I'll explain that. Um, so brief background. In November, December, I previously wore a device called an MCOT monitoring device. Um, that was, um, it was supposed to just be like a little electrical device that went on a large sticky pad about this big that went like over my heart area. Um, and it had live monitoring like through the 4G network and I carried a cell phone device. It was like um, a hacked Samsung device that had um, MCOT's own software on it. And basically anytime I felt something like a flutter or chest pain or anything like that, um, I would take that device out, I would log whatever symptom it was and send it. Um, if I had a syncope spell after I had recovered, I would take the, the device out, log that I had a syncope spell, and then their monitoring center would call me and ask what I had been doing, um, how long the spell had lasted, did I need medical care, etc., etc., etc. It was very live. Uh, and like I said, I wore that for 30 days. I think I had two syncope spells during that time. And basically what happened was the, the spells that I had where I passed out did not sync up with anything that was recorded on the device. Like it didn't make sense. Um, so they decided to have me wear this Zeo patch which is another monitoring device. Um, this one is, I don't know, I don't know. This one is weird because it, um, it's not live. There's no device that I carry with me where I log my own symptoms, which is a little frustrating because I, I feel like I'm having symptoms and I, I want to record or convey it somehow, but there's nothing that goes along with it. I just wear it when it's done, I take it off and I send it away. They download the information and give it to my doctor. And that's it. There's nothing that's like uploaded daily to my doctor for them to see. Um, so I don't know how it's superior to the MCOT. And I don't, I don't know how it's going to find something that the MCOT didn't find. <sighs> anyway, um, I wish I had made a video when I had the MCOT, but I didn't know that that wasn't going to find it and that we would be going to another patch. The reason that I wanted to make this is because when they told me that I'd be wearing it, I went to go do a search on it and there really was not a whole lot of information out there about it. So I was like, hey, if somebody else decides to go do a search on the MCOT patch, maybe I should make a video for them. Um, so I'm making a video. This device, I guess it's a little more rare than the MCOT. It's not used as often or something. I live in Austin, Texas, and I use the Baylor Scott and White um, healthcare network. I like that all of my specialists are within one network. 
I don't have to worry about transferring records from one specialist to another. My cardio, neuro, PCP, pulmonology, OBGYN, like everybody is in the same network. It's great. Um, but this device, apparently one did not exist within the Austin network of hospitals and I had to drive to their home area. They're based out of Temple, Texas is my understanding. Um, Baylor University is up there and that's kind of like their home mecca for Baylor, Scott and White. Um, and so I had to drive an hour north to get this device. I keep holding it up off screen. I don't know why I'm doing that. This device that you can't see over here. Anyway, this patch here. I had to drive an hour north to Temple to another hospital to walk in for the nurse to take an alcohol swab, clean my boob, peel off a patch, and stick it on and say, have a nice day. It was kind of dumb. And it was really funny afterwards because I texted my mom and my husband both that that was all that happened and that was the whole reason I had to drive north. I thought it was going to be this big complicated thing where they had to like fit diodes to very specific places or something. Nope. And they had two completely different responses that I had to laugh at. My husband was like, that seems stupid. And my mom is like little Miss Positivity and she was like, well, at least it wasn't more complicated than that. Love it. Anyway, um, I had to go all the way up to the temple location to get this thing. Um, so depending on where you are and if your care and diagnostics get to this point, um, your hospital might have it. It might take a little while for them to order it in. I don't know, but it was weird for me. I had to go an hour away for them to fit it. Um, and I did not even have to see like a doctor or anybody. It was just a regular nurse. That was it. No appointment. Well, I mean, I had like, I had a time that I had to be there, but it wasn't like a whole appointment that they set aside. Um, when you go, there's like, whoops, <laughs> dropping stuff all over the place. Um, the box is full of like a bunch of information. Uh, the outside of the box will have a shipping label on it. Their location is in California, at least from where I am in Texas, that's where my device is being shipped to, is to California. Um, I'm assuming because I'm pretty centrally located in the U.S., that is their only location. I don't know if they have another location like towards the East Coast or what. Um, I have not actually looked that up, so I'm not going to attest to anything. But um, the location where all of my stuff is going is going to be California. And basically they just like rip the chip out of this thing, download all the data, and then forward it to my doctor. So my doctor's follow-up appointment after this is over is actually set for about 10 days out so that there's enough time for this to reach them. Even with this extra day that I left it on to show you guys. Um, Anyway, plenty of time for it to get shipped out there and all of that to happen and take place. Um, in the booklet, there's going to be information. I'm not going to like show it all to you guys, but it's going to have like cover my personal info, but there's going to be like a sticker with like barcode patient info your doctor's name and info that ordered it, um, when they fit it, what time, um, how long they wanted you to wear it, um, like the sticker that came off of the device so they can make sure it's paired and matches and like all this crazy stuff. Um, then there's some care instructions like how to shower with it when you get home. They do want you to not shower for the first 24 hours that you have it on. So keep that in mind when you go to have it fit. If you're one of those people that like absolutely cannot shower um, or like cannot go 24 hours without showering, be sure to shower like just before you go and have it fit. My husband is that way. Um, I could go a couple days 
I mean, it's not like I go jogging every day or do anything gross and sweaty, but he's like, a shower is his coffee in the morning. Like, his day is not begun until he's showered. Um, for me, a shower is like, I mean, if you guys are spoonies, you know, shower days are hard. Um, so, <laughs> I could go a day or two. So anyway, it's if you have already gone a couple days and you don't want to go another day, maybe have a shower day right before you go and get this thing done. Um, anyway, then when your term is over with this thing, this uh, little booklet that they give you, the very back page is going to have this on here. Um, it comes with like this cleaning stuff because it's like super gooey. I'll show you the device in a second. Um, so it has like a little cleansing pad to get that off of there when it's all done. And then you stick the device. It's kidney bean shaped. As you can tell from the little silhouette. You just slap it on here. You close the book. And then you stick the whole book in the box. And you close that up. And it's already packaged and labeled when they give it to you. They suggested that I tape everything really good before I mail it. Because if anything is lost or stolen from this, I will be charged like $5,000. So there's that. Um, ways that this differed from the MCOT patch. Like I said, this does not have live monitoring, so that was a little weird. The other thing that is weird that I don't really like is with the MCOT patch, um, and with the MCOT patch, it was supposed to be one patch like this thing, except I was really allergic to the adhesive that the little box went on that was in one patch. I couldn't wear that patch because I super duper broke out. So I had to wear this like neck lanyard that the little computer box thing went in and then it had like these three diodes that I had to wear instead that went like here, here, and then like under my left boob. Um, so, and then like had three wire leads, like an EKG, except only three. Um, I kind of a little bit broke out on those, but not as bad as like the one patch. Anyway, I forgot where I was going with that. Oh, the sticky stuff. So on the MCOT, like every two or three days, you changed out. If you weren't allergic to the one patch style, you like ripped that off. You changed the little box out to a new patch. When you're in the shower, you like scrub all the adhesive crap off. And then like after you get out of the shower, you like apply a new patch and put it back on. Um, or in my case, the diodes, you scrub the little spots that they were on. And then you like put fresh diodes on. This thing... You leave the one patch on for the whole term that the doctor has prescribed it for. Like, the thing is built into the patch, and there's no changing the patch, and it kind of grosses me out to have it on for two weeks straight. And some people have this prescribed even longer. Some people go, like, 30 days. My doctor only ordered 14. So that kind of grosses me out. I don't like that. I'm scared of putting them fine when I take it off. I haven't had any itchy scratchy breakout stuff underneath, which is good, but um, yeah, I don't like that. Um, I guess those are really the only ways that they differ. I guess I'll show it to you now. Um, it's, it's this guy here. It has, since I've been wearing it for two weeks, oh my god, the light is horrible. Since I've been wearing it for two weeks, there is obviously going to be, like, clothing fuzz stuck to it and stuff. And the patch itself is just this shape right here. But it does not stick very well. And so the nurse sent me home with extra tachyderms that I have stuck around the edges here. Um, to help hold it on and hold it in place. So that's it. It just goes like, and it's in like a really like, ugh, I'm trying to like keep it where you can see it on camera. It's in a kind of highly mobile area right there, like practically down in my armpit. So that's why she sent me with extra tech. 
Sorry, it's like a weird contortion thing trying to like keep it in a good angle for the camera. Um, that's why she sent me with the extra tegaderms was because the adhesive, especially in the shower, it like if it gets water in there because there's no adhesive like under the little computer box part. Um, it's just the two patches on either side, and so if water gets between the two, it can seep under. They do not want to stick. In fact, I'm worried that there's not going to be good data for like maybe the last half of however long I've been wearing this because showers might have completely screwed it up. I don't have much faith in this, but we'll see what they find. Um, so the extra techoderms, good news, no breakout. Um, techoderms I've never had an issue with. Those have always been fine. But I really don't like wearing the same thing for like two weeks straight, not being able to like clean underneath it or anything like that. Don't like that. Don't like the live feed, but fingers crossed it tells us something. I've had one syncope spell while wearing this. Um, so maybe they got something from that that the MCOT wouldn't have got. I guess we'll see. So that's it. That's the ZOXT patch. So maybe this video finds somebody who has been prescribed the Zio patch and is wondering what it is and if they have already been through the MCOT patch they're wondering how that is. Or I'll even tag the MCOT patch in this and even though I don't have it to show you I talk a lot about it so maybe you'll learn some information about that. Um, I will in the description below I will try to find some good websites for the manufacturers to link for both. So anybody looking for any of that information, there you go. That's it. Peace out, guys.